Hey my YouTube buddies, today I want to show you what my dad and I did to build my power center and add shore power to my van. This video is a little bit delayed because I actually wanted to do the whole thing so showing the solar panels and the battery isolator, but we're uh, not going to be doing those second two parts until sometime this summer. So let's take a look and see what we've done this thus far. <laughs> First off, let me remind everyone that I'm converting this 1998 Chevy Astro van into a camper van. So let's take a look. My dad and I sat around in the van for a while brainstorming on how we we're going to get power in the van. And we came up with this idea to put everything in a confined space. We have uh, a mock-up here of the power center that, we're, that we built and then two batteries. This is located at the back passenger wheel well area. After a few weeks went by, some of the parts started showing up, so I went back out to my dad's house and we started to put this thing together. Here's a look at the two batteries fitting perfectly back in that corner of the van. Now we did have to relocate the jack and we had to remove the mount, the jack mount. And let me tell you, that jack mount wasn't coming out easy. Now we picked these two batteries because they fit perfectly in that spot in the back corner of the van. They're made by US Battery, they're AGM, they're 6 volt batteries, and together they combine to give us 210 amp hours. The wheel well is generally wasted space, so we decided to build a box around it and fit all of our electronics inside this box. That way we're using the space where most van builds you see this space is being wasted. The length of the box is about 31 inches. It butts up against the batteries and it runs up to where the sliding door opening begins. The depth of this box is about 13 inches on the battery side and somewhere around 10 inches on the sliding door side. Unfortunately I had to get back to Houston, but my dad was nice enough to continue with the power center build while I was gone. We pulled everything out of the van and gave him a nice uh, little setup to work with until I was able to return. Here's a look at my dad's original sketch of the power center build. Feel free to pause it now if you want to take a better look at this. Upon returning back to my dad's house, I was happy to see that he had made quite a bit of progress on the power center. We decided to move the power center and the batteries into the van just to see how everything fit. It fit well, so now it's time to finish things up. Here's a look at the front side of the power center as my dad is mounting the components and getting ready to wire the whole thing up. The plan eventually will be to build storage above this power center. So my dad had this access panel and the aluminum access panel made to allow us to get in there and make repairs if anything goes wrong. Now here's a look at the inside of the power center. Notice the access door is closed and it's got a little latch there that keeps it locked, keeps it secured. So this is looking from the wall side of the van. If it was inside the van, we're, the wall would be covering this part right here. So it would be up against the wall. All the, all the cabling, all the wiring is just about done. And this is how it's looking. Okay, so here's a look at the completed power center. Notice my dad painted the outside of the aluminum access door black, which uh, looks pretty cool. The only thing we couldn't find at the time was a black outlet cover, which we later uh, added on. Well, now that we have the power center and the batteries, it's time to pump some juice into the system. Eventually, we plan on adding solar panels and a battery isolator, but for now, we just went with shore power. It was time to install our Marine Coast Shore Power Inlet, which will allow us to connect to a 15 amp house outlet, which will charge our batteries. Here's a look at our predetermined spot for our Shore Power Inlet, which we're about to cut, and it's going to enter into the back of the power center, and then connect and allow us to run juice to the batteries. Here are a couple pictures of my dad doing the scary part which is cutting holes in the van for the uh, shore power inlet. Here's the backside look of the shore power inlet before we fit it in the hole and connect it to the power center. 
To keep the batteries from moving around while driving, we added a border around the base of the batteries to keep the batteries from sliding around, and then we added this bar across the top and bolted it down to keep the batteries from popping up and down. So this is what the exterior of the power center looks like today. Notice we did replace that power outlet with the black one, and it does show a little bit of wear, but it's working awesomely. Here's a look at the inside of the power center with the access door open and all the wires neatly organized. Now here's a look at the other side of the inside of the power center. Okay, so let me show you how I use my power center on a daily basis. As you can see here, I've got the, the shore power inlet. It's a standard five, uh, 15 amp inlet, and I've got a extension cable here. It's plugged into a house outlet, 15 amp outlet. Just plug that guy in right there. Okay, so now I have the power cable or the extension cord is plugged into the wall on the inside, and the other the other end is plugged into the shore power inlet on the side of the van. So let's take a quick look at here what's going on. That's our uh, solar charger. It's currently sitting at 12.5 amps. Uh, it doesn't have a backlight. Unfortunately, that one doesn't have a backlight, and we're eventually going to replace that. Uh, this is the main power breaker. You flip that switch, and that allows power to start coming into the van. And that right there is the, uh, the charger, the battery charger breaker that turns this on, this battery charge over here. So let's flip the main power breaker on. Notice the green light comes on there. If the red light would come on, that would mean that there are crossed wires and it's not going to work. So you have to go find another outlet. Now let's flip the breaker for the battery charger. Flip that on and the battery charger will do a self test. And then it's going to go through seven phases of uh, charging the battery. The first phase is really, it's just a quick check. The first two actually and then it'll sit on three for quite a while and then four for quite a while and once we have the power on here it runs this is the whole AC side so we have two outlets here and the battery charger that's all the AC side of the van so it'll be on this for a while and once it's complete uh, down here at the bottom it'll go through all seven phases here uh, like I said, three and four are long phases, and the others are pretty quick. And once it's complete, the green light at full will light up. And let me get a better look at here. Well, let me let me uh, focus this a bit so you can see what we're looking at here. There we go. So, yeah, that light down there at full will be a green light there. Now let's go over and take a look at our solar charger. Now this is a Windy Nation P30L solar charger. It's it's a it's a good beginner solar charger. It doesn't have a backlight, so it makes it really hard to read. But it's a good start for about forty forty five dollars. So the right side of the power center is the AC side, and the left side here is the twelve volt side. Here is our twelve volt lighter outlet. We flick this thing open, and I usually like to plug my fan in here at night and run that through the night. Here's the adapter for the fan. Just plug that right in there and flip the fan on. And the fan that I use is this Endless Breeze fan. It's made by Fantastic Fan. So the lighter plug outlet here and my 200 watt inverter run strictly off the battery. So they're taking battery power whenever they're being used. We've got the USB and we have one outlet. And here's the switch here. You put it on two. And that makes it to where these USB outlets can be used. I can plug a cell phone or whatever in, go to the middle position, and that turns the inverter off. Flick it over to one, and now that light comes on, and this outlet is now available. I can plug my laptop or anything else in there that's under 200 watts. Well, thanks for watching my build video number six. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. And don't forget to click that like button. Thanks a lot.